All right, Nick, let's talk about the Seattle Seahawks. This offseason has been a huge change for Seattle, whether you're talking about new players on this squad, new guys all around the defensive and offensive side of the ball, new head coach, new staff. I think this is a big year for Seattle. But I think we need to look away from the game of football uh, for a second and look towards the numbers, the financials, you know, the front office type stuff. And Seattle's also made some very good changes in that regard as well. And I think they're being a little bit overlooked. This move was a couple days old, but I think it's super important. And I don't think enough people are drawing attention to it. Let's get into the article and we can talk more about this on the other side. This is from Field Goals. It says, with free agency in the rearview mirror and the draft just over the horizon, the Seahawks have announced a significant change in the front office. New Vice President of Football Administration Joey Lane replaces Matt Thomas as the top salary cap manager for the Seahawks, and the change could be significant. Thomas, of course, oversaw a cap management style that was among the most conservative in, in the NFL and rarely saw the Seahawks get aggressive with their cap management. Rather, the Hawks have preferred to operate in a method more consistent with the salary cap management methods from prior to the 2011 collective bargaining agreement and have largely avoided the use of void years and other tools to defer cap charges. With Lane in charge, that could all change. Hired from the Green Bay Packers after several years with the Chicago Bears, Lane earned his start in the NFL with the New Orleans Saints. Nick, I think this is a great move for the Seahawks to come more into you know the future of the NFL using all of the tips and tricks of building salaries to get this team to be able to be a little bit more aggressive. I'm curious what your thoughts are, but Seattle fans, in the comment section below, this guy is a master of dealing with salary cap and contract management. Let us know what players are you looking forward to maybe restructuring their contracts and being able to use some of these tips and tricks that he's able to bring to the Seahawks they have not used in the past that you think would be the most effective? Let us know in the comment section below. But Nick, what are your thoughts on the latest front office change by the Seahawks? So I want to give a lot of credit to the Seahawks owner, Schnipp, and of course, general manager, John Schneider, for what he's done this offseason. Because one of the great challenges in any organization, whether it's an NFL franchise, a business, a church, whatever it may be, is that when you've had a period of sustained success, which obviously the Seahawks under Pete Carroll did, it's really hard to completely upset the apple cart. We've seen teams like the Pittsburgh Steelers for the better part of the last five, six, seven years struggle to make any sort of changes just because they were so long, so consistently very good. They're slowly starting to get there in Pittsburgh. Seattle, John Schneider is being very smart. He's getting ahead of it. We already saw it earlier this offseason, like you alluded to, revamping the entire coaching staff, going younger, completely different direction, turning this uh, battleship of a franchise the completely different direction, modernizing, getting younger, smarter, faster. Faster. And that's exactly what we're seeing here in the front office with the salary cap management as well. The Seattle Seahawks have been such an interesting team because they kind of relied on Pete Carroll's defensive genius, a couple key superstars, and some Russell Wilson magic to be really good after their Super Bowl Legion of Boom era ended. They were winning 10, 11, 12 games, making playoffs, but they were never getting over the hump. Now that the Seattle Seahawks have completely, of course, distanced themselves from Russell Wilson, Pete Carroll is gone, now they can modernize. And I think John Schneider recognizing that's a deficiency in their franchise is really smart. And again, it is so hard when you're part of a successful entity to recognize that you're heading in the wrong direction even when the results don't necessarily indicate that, right? Obviously, back-to-back -back winning seasons. They made the playoffs two years ago. Good quarterback, good culture, a lot of good players, obviously great fan base. So it's really hard to sit there and look at the situation and say, yeah, we need to make big changes. But the reality is the worst place to be in the NFL is 9-8 and eight consistently, right? You're not bad enough to get a lot of draft capital. You're not good enough to win Super Bowls. The Seahawks obviously needed a change at the coaching staff. They did it with Mike McDonald. I think that's working really well so far. We'll, of course, see how it continues to go. But I think making the change in terms of how they're handling salary cap, how they're handling negotiations, how they're handling the dollars, getting more modern with that, I think will really, really help them out. Because here's the important thing you understand. Seattle's been winning these 9, 10 games most of the you know, most of the part of the last half decade with basically one hand tied behind their back. Virtually every other franchise is using void years. It's using funky restructuring. It's, it's setting up interesting things. It's going after rookies with the mindset that the rookie wage scale is capped, right? Every other franchise is whole hog invested in that strategy. The Seattle Seahawks have been very old school in how they've done it. I think that's been kind of hampering them in a lot of their situations. The fact that they're making that change here, I think this 
this has a chance to open up a lot of different strategic opportunities for the Seattle Seahawks. And I think will really help them get back to not just making the playoffs, not just winning nine games, but making deep playoff runs and maybe some Super Bowl pushes. Yeah, Nick, and there's a few things I want to talk about. One thing I want to clarify is when Lane did start with the Saints, he was not part, he was early on enough that wasn't part of the mess, kind of the, the Saints salary cap is a little bit now, but there is some magic in that mess a little bit as well. So he was uh, before that time, he was during the years where they're trying to squeeze the most out of Drew Brees and get some weapons around him to get to another Super Bowl. But also, I think th- you touched on this a little bit, and I think it's really important. Seattle fans shouldn't expect an immediate, you know, ROI and getting Lane into the front office. This is a guy that's not going to solve all your problems in 2024. This is more of a long-term future type play as they go through, like you said, as the new rookies come in, as next round of free agents come in. This is a guy that's going to help you down the stretch and all, every move he makes is always going to be future looking. So I really like this move in the sense that the new team, the new coach, everybody's wanting to, like you said, 9-8, and eight, not a great place to be. You want to win? You want to win now. You want to be able to be the most successful team you can be now, but you always got to have someone on your roster, on your business, and if you're talking about in the NFL sense, that's looking towards the future to say, hey, two, three, four, five years down the line, how are we going to be financially? Is there anything we can do to set ourselves above everybody else? Is there a little bit of a trick here? We can put a void year here. Something there to help us extend contracts out a little bit further. I think that it's a really smart move for Seattle because, quite honestly, if you're 15 years behind the curve as far as how you're dealing with salary caps, I think you're going to be, like you said, very, very, you know, a step behind everyone else in the NFL. Now, getting them up to speed is going to make a huge difference for the Seahawks. And you can kind of see in how they handled a lot of their strategies over the past decade. Again, salary cap management feeding John Schneider that data that in the new era, first round draft picks and the new collective bargaining agreement, like they're extremely valuable because the wage scale is capped. But the Seattle Seahawks for a number of years were trading away draft picks from 2013 to 2015. No first round pick, no first round pick in 2017 or 2021. In fact, if it weren't for the Russell Wilson trade in which they got obviously the number of draft picks they did, there would have been no team with fewer first round draft picks over the last 11 years than the Seattle Seahawks, which obviously puts them at a massive disadvantage in the new salary cap era. So we're seeing Seattle finally modernizing. They recognized what they needed to correct. Again, I give a lot of credit to John Schneider. I think this is an underrated move he just made, and I agree with you 100%. It's not at a quick fix. It's not going to solve all your problems, but starting with this upcoming draft and at a future off seasons and beyond, we're going to see this more modern Seattle Seahawks team get better and better and finally get back to winning more and more playoff games and making those deep playoff pushes. <laughs>